what it is and what it do we back with another me acting up hour presented to you by the names are not important podcast with mac and free but it's your boy be free in the building with brother Mackie, Will McKee. What's going on, McKee? How you feeling, bro? Feeling real good. Feeling real good. Good to see you, Ben. Ready to discuss another exciting week of HBCU, MEAC, CIAA football. And at the end of the show, highlighting North Carolina A&T's autonomous car program in the School of Engineering. So, Let's get it, Ben. Let's go. No doubt. No doubt. And as we always like to remind everybody, this is the Me Acting Up Hour. You can catch every Sunday, 9 p.m. You can also catch the Names Are Not Important podcast with Mac and Free. Uh, we usually do a live uh, short on, on Friday evenings. Catch us, but you can go to our channel on YouTube uh, at Names Are Not Important, or you can catch us on Facebook names are not important or mac and free on ig but this is mac me acting up baby so what we focus on here is 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 the athletics uh involved with the MEAC conference as well as the ciaa and just kind of give our take on some of the happenings and what's going on and and we'll kind of step beyond the field a little bit sometimes to get into that mix it up and maybe make some folk mad no we ain't gonna do that but uh but we also like to highlight uh, something that may not often be talked about when we're in the midst of, of a sports season, and that is highlighting some of the academic excellence of these institutions, uh, something that we truly uh, like to lift up and maybe expose others to so that they can share that, um, the excellence that goes along with it. And before we start, I got one shout out I want to do, and, and I want to shout out to my steel undefeated benedict college tigers after a 31 to 3 thumping against shawan we we put it on them uh, uh so we still got that that train moving so shout out to my bc tigers bc bc, BC. oh no. no. all you right we're still rolling uh ready to get into that siac conference and do it once again and repeat so shout out to them but can you got any shout out before we get started my brother well, I got to shout out uh, Brother D uh, from Names Are Not Important. Big shout out wow. to Brother D. And a big shout out to, uh, we cover the CIAA, but big shout out to uh, the Rams of Winston-Salem State, who we'll talk about a little later, who uh, I'll just hold that. And uh, and my Bulldogs from Orangeburg, but that's coming up. All right. Well, look. Oh, 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 no. I got to shout out somebody else, Ben. Uh, got to shout out Byron Allen. Hashtag Byron Allen. Hashtag HBCU Go. Hashtag The Grio. And we'll talk about that a little later, too. But his 10 year uh, contract and agreement investment on HBCUs is in many ways unprecedented. That's what we are talking about when we're talking about investing in the community. Big shout out to Byron Allen. Shout out, shout out. Yeah, and we will get into that because we do want to step beyond just the, 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 the playing field to get into uh, many other things that are related around our HBCU athletics. Uh, but like we focus mainly on the MEAC and the CIAA. And shout out to them brothers. As swacking a fool, the inspiration we got. Love. Whacking a fool, whacking a fool, whacking so. a fool. Big shout out! Uh, oh, Ben, and a couple other shout outs. Come on, come uh, on. Big shout out to my Winston Salem State posse. My oh, crew. oh yeah, oh yeah. None other than Kevin Surratt, who has uh -huh. two sons that play professional football. One for the New York Jets, the other one for the Memphis Showboat. Uh, yeah. Coach Terrence Graves down at Southern University, uh, one of the best coaches around. Tony Gunther, who is just a corporate raider. Uh, uh, Winston-Salem State Ram with BP Oil. Big shouts out to him. Big, big shouts out to Timothy Pittman, who runs the counseling department at WSSU and does a great job. And Charlie Clemens, who uh, is 
uh, reforming people in, in our state's penal system. Those brothers are on board. They tune in. Big shout out to them. That's what HBCU life is all about. You right. emerge from our schools with lifelong relationships that, that give you a boost in your life. So big shout out to you. I had to do that. Shout out. Shout out to the Ram, to the Ramily over there, the Posse. Uh, but uh, well, with that, man, let's jump right into to some 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 quick scores and, and get your thought. And as you see him running across on the ticker, but uh, you know, I want to start with 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 the Norfolk State Spartans. Um, getting off the rough start, taking taking that loss early in, to Virginia State, which which indicates how I, I hey, told you watch watch for the Trojans. But Norfolk State, another impressive win. Uh, they they won twenty one fourteen against Towns and the Towns team that just came off a, a strong showing at Morgan State. Uh, watch out for Sparty. Um, as we see, North Carolina Central came back, bounced back from that tough loss at UCLA beating uh, Mississippi Valley State uh, 45 to 3 in the Circle City Classic. Uh, Delaware State taking enough, another rough one at uh, FBS opponent Miami of Ohio 62 to 20. Uh, Morgan State, another tough loss, close one, uh, but they lose. They go down to Albany. Uh, 23 to 17. And then, as you said, but keep the Bulldogs get in the win collar with an impressive victory over the Citadel, that low country battle down there. Uh, I know there's a lot of shrimp and grits uh, 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 yes, sir. being eaten uh, this weekend for that low country battle. Yeah. Shout out uh, to the low country. But you know that. But, McKee, I, I want to say something, man. Hey, man, listen. You know, early on, I, I was, I was, I was saying that the Morgan State, they look like they might challenge, but man, I'm, I'm kind of swaying towards Sparty, man. I think they might challenge NCCU for that, for, for that MEAC title. Now, now, granted, I'm still going with the Eagles, still going with the Eagles, but I, I think Norfolk State gonna make that thing a little interesting, man. Well, how you feel? Well, uh, you know, Norfolk State's program has been uh, on the rise uh, since the acquisition of uh, uh, Southern's former head football coach when he made that decision to come up. And he's he's a MEAC guy originally, I want to say. Um, he is a winner. He won at Southern uh, University, and he's taken his winning ways to Norfolk State. Norfolk State is one of those places that, Great school, great tradition. And people have always kind of said, once they get the right fit with that location, that's a beautiful location to have a recruiting trip on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you know, Virginia Beach and Tidewater has some of the best athletes of all time you know, in this country's history. That Tidewater area has been a fertile crescent of recruiting for so many programs outside of Virginia. Uh, yeah. you know, UNC made a living uh, with the with, with the Tidewater area. So people have always said, once somebody comes in there, not that no one has, because there have been people that have done well there, but they once somebody could really lock that area down and get those those student athletes that ODU uh, get sometimes, or get, get some of those mid-major talents, and still a couple uh, power fives uh, great athletes to stay home in Norfolk, and, and uh, he. I think this is the coach to do it. They are, and they came close uh, last year. Norfolk State was knocking yeah. at the door, uh, and the year before that, they were in a tough battle with South Carolina State, uh, which we South Carolina State went on to the Celebration Bowl where they defeated Jackson State. But Norfolk State's been knocking at the door, and I, they, they look like they're ready to kick it in. The MEAC is going to be competitive in this conference season, isn't it? No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you got Norfolk. It's gonna be there I still, yeah, I still, and I still think SCSU is going to be right there uh, at the well, end, yeah. especially with that tough schedule they played. They, they, yeah. You know, they're prepared. So, yeah, yeah it's 
going to be an interesting battle. And and NCTU has a tough schedule. They got some tough opponents, beatable opponents, but some tough opponents coming coming up with uh, Campbell. You know, Mike Mentor going to have them boys ready and, and Elon uh, and then the Bulldogs. So uh, it's going to be a real interesting next three, four weeks to kind of see how some of those uh, some of that positioning is going to play out. Um, but it's going to be real interesting. But I'm still rocking yeah. with the Eagles, man. I'm still rocking with the Eagles. They've been they've been pretty pretty consistent. Um, and they beat teams that they're supposed to beat how they supposed to beat them. And that's 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 what's been most impressive. You know, they they could have come off the rough loss at UCLA and then traveling to Indianapolis and could have you know had a tougher game than it than it could have been, you know, shaking off that. But they were pretty dominant and did what they're supposed to do. So what we did kind of a little bit on Saturday, McKee, and if you want to kind of go in, I want to give another shout out to those who may not have caught our little Saturday preview. It was only on for about 20 minutes. Uh, shout out to the Circle City Classic that's been doing it for 39 years. And, and one thing we lifted up was, you know, uh, Circle City Classic has been – the, the most consistent and most prominent, I think, national classic for HBCUs. You have many others that are, are, are more regional for those traditional matchups that you see or, or state matchups. But uh, the Circle City, being that they don't have any HBCUs that I know of in Indiana, but they've been one of the premier hosts, the Black Expo, uh, Indiana Black Expo and hosting this event, thirty nine years, man. So shout out to them and what they're doing, man. Go, go. You know, if you got something you want to add on that. Well, you know, like we said a little, a little bit on Saturday, the whole concept of the classic. So this is a not exclusively HBCU uh, phenomenon, but largely HBCU. Uh, going all the way to the and, and Norfolk State's coach, Coach Odom, I, I want to say, um, yeah. up at Norfolk State. Big shout out to him. He does a great job. He's a hard yeah. worker. But anyway, the classic concept goes all the way back to the Orange Blossom Classic in in my in Florida. I'm not saying that's yeah. the first. Not sure about that, but uh, that was in pre-integration back days. No bowl, the the union. The Gold Bowl in Richmond, uh, in Richmond, Virginia. And, uh, you know, these classics were creative ways for schools with such of a prestigious history and awesome ball players and great fans and alumni, but often cash strapped, short on money. So, yeah. anybody out there that's ever had to engineer a big entity that doesn't have a lot of funds and you're up against people that have mega dollars. Uh, Ohio State's program, you're looking at like a $75 million operation there. Uh, University of Michigan, probably like $68 million operations. And you're, you're in uh, the HBCU realm. You had to do something creative to generate interest in, in, in the bands and the pageantry. So. Uh, Circle City Classic, as you said, big shout out to them. And you talked a little bit yesterday about the Black Expo that's there in it, uh, it, you, that same time as the Circle City Classic, which is just a phenomenal world-class event. There's a small HBCU presence in Indiana, but not much at all. So uh, it's an opportunity for recruiting. Uh, enrollment management folks can go there, set up their table, and get some Midwestern students that 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 may not have even been well aware of who these institutions were. So the spillover is much bigger than between the white lines of the football field. It's a community event up there with a parade. It's just a it's just a great event. And North Carolina Central, to your point, yesterday uh, they they started out with. WSSU, which is a rivalry. Then they went on to uh, North Carolina a and which is a bitter rivalry, tough game. Then they went out to UCLA, traveled across the country. So, yeah, we were looking for a potential let-up 
it's hard to motivate your players through all of that travel and fatigue. But big shout out to the coach and the staff down there in Durham, North Carolina. They came to play, put 40 plus up on the board, held uh, Mississippi Valley State to about what seven? What they hold three them points. to? Three points. To three, three points. points. Uh, my lord! Uh, big shout out to the <laughs> Eagles. Yeah, and uh, and I believe you, uh, McKee. When you hit on the orange blossom, goes back to nineteen thirty. Three. Wow. So wow. Uh, I believe that might be the oldest. Uh the Magic City, I think, being next, 1940, you know, Alabama State, Alabama AM. Um that one's so, in some yeah. danger. That one's in some danger too. Maybe next week or well, with that swag territory. We let swag in the fool handle that. But we'll let uh, go handle that. But we yeah, yeah, go. go yeah, go check them uh, out. They'll oh, probably talk uh, about no. that. And the the Turkey Day Classic, yes. Um, yeah. The old Turkey Day, uh, uh, there, there used to be an old Turkey Day with Livingstone and John C. Smith. We were talking about that a while ago. But, you know, this is the, the Turkey Day in Montgomery. Um that goes back with Alabama State and Miles College to 1924. So, so uh, yeah, mm. uh, a lot of history with these classics. To your point, but we, yeah, but we gonna get into some more controversial stuff. We just we trying to get through and and, and, and get through the the the, the, the cosmetics. <laughs> right, right. We gotta do but, that. Uh, we gotta do that. But but yeah, but shout out Circuit City Classic, and once again, just a, another interesting stat. Like I say, it's beyond the lines. Um, they put more than in their almost forty year history, put more than five point five million dollars towards the education of Indiana students uh, for college, mm. uh, and just the exposure they're given to our HBCUs in that classic with everything, the bands, everything, uh, and once again, it's the Black Expo. So yeah. you got a lot of black entrepreneurs and businesses showcasing. So it's a it's a great event. I hope to be able to support even more in the future. Uh, you know, but uh, shout out to them. So, brother McKee, let's let's move it to the CI man. This was this was a key weekend. We got to really see some things in the CI this weekend, man. Uh, there was a big matchup, which we'll come to last. Between Federal State and Virginia Union, but uh, I want to start with, with with this surprise team that that got another impressive win, and that's Johnson C. Smith. The Bulls, the Golden Bulls. Let me get it right. Went on the road to Lincoln, got another impressive win. I think they're flying under the radar, and they might sneak up in that South. Yeah, because uh, one thing we see with Federal State is. They, they, the heart of a champion, great defense, but they're struggling to put some points up. It's, it's almost as if if you can get 21 points on them, you've got a chance. Um, but 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 they're slowly moving, creeping. Uh, I think Federal State might have a run for that South title. Uh, yeah. I was a little more confident to start, but now just seeing in certain matchups, and that's not to take away uh, – any performance of, of, of the schools they can play. I yeah, man. It's looking it's looking it's it's looking competitive. And then and then another team that you cannot sleep on who beat that Norfolk State team is Virginia State with another impressive win. They shut out Livingstone, beat them 33 to nothing. Key, we might we might be looking at a, a new guard because because but we had a little struggle. Uh we might be looking at a, a changing of the guard in the CI, man. Winston, big win. Big uh, win. A shutout against a tough Bluefield State. Uh like we say, uh Federal State struggled to get them points. Uh Bowie State. Had a tough one against St. Augs. 
talk to me, man. What's uh, yeah. Man, we we might your 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 first prediction of the Rams coming out of the South is looking good, man. They rallying behind that young quarterback. Yeah, well said, Ben. And uh, Coach Massey is uh, uh, keeping those young men uh, focused on on uh, not even say can't say savage in the season, but you know one of the struggles you have at places like Winston Salem State is the tradition. Uh, you know, you got the home of Big House Games, who just set a unprecedented tradition all around of sports in general, sports icon, legend. Uh, then you walk all the way up to the Coach Bill Hayes uh, era where, you know, Hall of Fame, HBCU Hall of Fame, then the Pete Richardson, uh, uh, very good team, uh, uh, legendary coach, moved on to Southern University, and then Coach Blunt. And then, so it, it, it's a place where if you lose a few early, it can be tough uh, to, 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 to go to the barbershop in Winston. It can be tough. But to his credit, he's keeping the heads in the game. They got some talent there. That quarter, the, the, uh, that young man behind center is, 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 as D was saying a couple weeks back, and as you just said, he can play with anybody. And, you know, when you got certain names across your chest, and you have a fighting chance. You that that tradition almost lifts you up and propels you forward. Uh, to, to Johnson C. Smith, it's another place where people have always said, with the talent that's in Charlotte uh, locally. Uh, for those who are not in North Carolina, South Carolina, who don't know, Charlotte is one of the football meccas uh, of the country. Uh, that it's like playing. Florida high schools because they have a lot of players, they're big, they're fast, and they grow up playing at a high level from an early age. So maybe this is the coaching staff that's able to get some of those young people to stay local and play in the Queen City. That skyline looks awfully bright at nighttime, and you got the Carolina Panthers right there in town. So it's a football town and can be an exciting place to play. Those guys up in Ettrick, Virginia, you know, they have a tradition too. Coach Lou Anderson back in the day just had perennial seven and eight win seasons, and he would take that CIAA championship. If you left it out there, he would take it with Remus James and those great receivers and quarterbacks up there. So, you know, that's another school. All they have to do is have a have a, a chance, and they can win. They're winning this year. So to your point, uh, uh, and big ups to, I know we coming to them last, big ups to Fayetteville State. I, I won't steal the thunder on that. It's going to be a dog fight coming out of the South. We were looking at the North, but here comes the South. Here comes the South. Yeah. But here comes the South, but let's go into that, man. Uh, FSU, shout out to the Broncos. You know, yeah. ties there. I, you know, I was born in Fayetteville. Grandmother is a, was a federal state Bronco. Uh, got love, but it's looking like Broncos, y'all going to have a dog fight. Yeah. Y'all going to have a dog fight. Uh, y'all, the, the heart of a champion. You still got to beat them. You still got to beat them. But it, 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 it looks like it might be a change. <laughs> might be a change. But that was the game of the week. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And and they went to to V Union and and a game where we felt Virginia Union would 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 probably come out victorious, being that they were hosting it. But Fayetteville State, once again, the heart of a champion. They know how to to win the, the tough ones, the ugly ones. Came out of there ten to seven, low scoring game. But what matters is is uh, who's on the winning side of that score. Uh, but nevertheless. Uh, it, it, it builds for for um, some interesting matchups coming up. Once again, um, next week, you know, uh, Winston Salem State looks like they're going to have the, the toughest challenge going on the road to Lincoln. So we're going to keep an eye on that. That might be our game of the week. We're giving a little preview, but we're going we gonna to move past that. Okay? But uh, once again, another big weekend. 
shout out to all the school. Just this is I'm I'm gonna say this. This might be one of the most competitive seasons uh in CI, especially in some years. You got to yeah. me six teams that's gonna be right there at the end, I think. Um compete. So yeah. you know, and 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 uh you know you rarely see that when you got that many teams. You might have two or three that can you know that that but right now there's about six teams. Three in the north with Union who still got a shot, Virginia State and Bowie State. In the South, John C. Smith still undefeated in conference, Winston undefeated in conference, Beaver State undefeated in conference. So it's gonna be interesting when those two start to bump heads and start to make room and shoot them bows and start vying for that number one spot, as Luda. Luda say. Coming for that number one spot. Shout yeah. out to hip hop 50 years. But Shout out uh, to Luda, ATL. So let's talk, let's talk. Let's, we done did all the nice stuff. Yeah, we done yeah. did all the nice stuff. We had some some interesting talks and in, 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 uh, production uh, and all that. But we're gonna start. We're gonna stay harmonious. Uh, how, how you feel about the Byron Allen deal? Do you think it's it, it's gonna help the take? And it's primarily with the CIAA, HBCU mm-hmm. go. Ten years. Do you think it's gonna take them to that next level? How, how do you see this? Man, I think it's big on multiple levels. I, I think first of all, it's an example to other uh, big money business people out there that uh, you know. Reverend Jesse Jackson used to always say that the uh, the, the 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 inner city America. Some people call it the hood. Some people call it. Uh, many things, but that areas with high concentration of uh, of blacks in a city um, that it had ta- like talent, talent, treasure, and opportunity. It, it was a good uh, trifecta that he used to mention, and uh, it's the same with and, and because the geographical position of both of our schools, uh, these schools were founded in the late 1800s, most of them, so they were founded in what's the black community and as the black community grew and integration came uh to pass uh many people moved away from but those campuses are still right there in the black community and for somebody that has done as well as byron allen has who is as jay-z would say an unprecedented run his skyrocketing through uh the the mass media world and winning those big cases, uh, which has just made his largesse out the roof. For him to see the value and the treasure that's in HBCU sports, that's mm-hmm. in the HBCU, uh, the, the community at large, and for him to invest, Byron Allen does not invest where it doesn't make sense. So he knew that there was a void there with HBCU coverage, that that it wasn't being covered enough with the resurgence of the uh, HBCU spotlight being back in vision with the George Floyd situation, uh, gave the HBCU visibility a little uptick, recent Supreme Court decisions on uh, admissions uh, being a kind of an adverse uh, SCOTUS decisions on uh, our, our Blacks' ability to get into Ivy League schools has also kind of said to the community, uh, let's reinvest where we are. This is nothing against people that go to school wherever. We fought for that too. We fought for equal access under the law in 1965 and 1963 with those seminal court cases. But you have to, charity begins at home as Fonte Coleman and Little Brothers said. Charity no, no. begins at home. You have we have to invest in our own so to well, answer me, your let question. Me ask, let me ask this. And and because yeah. Mac is not here, you know, he's usually the one that brings a unique side that really engages in I'm gonna take it a different way. 
Let's go. Brother Mackey, is is this a part of the the Dion effect? <laughs> and what I and what I mean is, you know, he came three years ago to Jackson State. A lot of attention now being placed primarily on his program, but you see more uh, larger entities, the NBA, trying to connect with HBC. You see this movement. Is this another sign of the Dion effect? Was by now HBC you go is, has been together when he started the Grio last year because they they've been televising HBCU games. So we not this is more of a somebody was going somebody was going to take that in. <laughs> yeah, but. Even Dion came several years ago and started the wave. Is this is this still a part of the Dion effect? And now, hey, he's gone. Maybe I can step into that that void that's filled with connecting a you know a big name, Byron Allen. Yeah, having a more yeah. prominent role. Is this Dion effect? Would it have happened without Dion? I want to hear some of these, some of these folks, especially some of the swag folks. If you're checking us out, let us know. Do we have Dion for this? Would this deal have happened? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes and no, uh, and right. that split. Yes and no. Uh, in politics, we say we have no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, just permanent interests. No permanent friends, no permanent enemies, just permanent interests. So, to, you know, and I we got to hear from what, what you think about that, because in your very living room, <laughs> your father was negotiating with those early BET deals for black yeah. college sports. He was initiating a lot of that. And we put out a, a great article. Uh, we reposted a, a great article on uh, Key and Free Senior and uh, Title Nine, you know, a big shout out to women in sports and giving them their equal shine and their equilibrium uh, that they deserve. But to go to your question real quick, uh, uh, you know, when your interest, to go back to the political adage, when your interest is increasing revenue for HBCU sports and HBCUs, uh, getting better, getting getting more talent, Getting, getting uh, uh, the best players that we can, scholar athletes, and a prime time Deion Sanders comes to an HBCU and causes uh, a swoosh effect where it's increasing the visibility. Uh, we know that Deion Sanders is a walking magnet for revenue. Uh, we interested in that, not so much Deion the person, even though I think he's an awesome, awesome man. It's not so much him in a person to get in, in, in a cult following of celebrity. You know, we live in a very celebrity obsessed culture. It's not about the selfie in this one. It's not about his, but it's about what he brings to the table. And it's about harnessing that and making it work for you, all of the institutions. Deion Sanders has had an effect on every aspect of HBCU sports since he arrived. So that's undeniable. That's not to say he founded HBCU sports. You just said this, the, 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 the Orange Blossom Classic goes back to the 1930s. HBCU sports was founded on Johnny B. McClendon's and uh, Dr. Walker's at, at, from Benedict College and NCCU. <laughs> It was founded on big house games and, and, and people that don't even have big names that put in tireless effort, the Kasem's, uh down down south, and, you know, and on and on and on. Uh, but he had a serious media and revenue impact on us. And I'll say this, it probably did. Get, I, I hadn't thought of that before tonight. It probably did get Byron Allen's attention. And it probably either introduced him to or reminded him of the fact that there's gold in them their heels, meaning the HBCU community is a place of richness. And if somebody dares to invest in it and focus on it, 
and there should be no one in America. I know how how we do in this country from from time to time, and and the hate is sixteen eleven on up. But there's you can't come at you coming against the rise of one of America's uh, a jewel in the crown of America. Yeah, I'm being cliche is right now. You could play the violins, but you can't hate. <laughs> you cannot hate on a Virginia Union. In, uh, coming up to a higher level. It, it's just the moral high ground is too high on this one. So big shout out to Byron Allen. You've been, in, uh, your your father did a plethora from the Freedom Bowl to, to, to uh, his deal with BET. What say you about a Byron Allen doing a 10-year deal with HBCU Sports? What do you say with your experience? It's awesome. What you it's awesome. Okay. Um, and and I want to shout out too, because this doesn't get a lot of play too. And many, many are reconnecting. And what I want to point out is that uh, even uh, 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 Roland Martin's network, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the Black Star Network, inked the deal. Uh, oh, I forget the conference, the NIA conference with Xavier and Russ College, and shout out to those HBCUs. They've even inked the deal to cover basketball and and and, and baseball. And it's Talladega. Talladega, yeah. So a uh, 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 prime time album model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. we, you know, we, you know, to your point, many have started to recognize and and. And, and in my opinion, it don't matter who started it as long as we're doing it now. Because yeah. it needed to be done. Um, shout out to Bob Johnson who who who, who got the ball rolling with with, yeah. with the games of the week on BET and, and hosting that. And we, we, we look at what is parlayed into. Um, because there are schools, let's be honest, that get left out. Because even with the ESPN deals and everything. Uh, before uh, it was primarily on the on the the, the FCS school, right? So your SIC, your CIAA usually got left out. Now they're they're on like ESPN Plus. You got to have certain subscriptions and stuff to maybe catch some stuff. But with this, we need something that we can kind of be the uh, primary stakeholders. Like it's not somebody uh, like providing but we're actually there at the table uh striving along with and that's what i think this encompasses with byron allen i think it's an opportunity for the for the hbcus uh involved in this deal to be there in stride and not just trying to take the parental here you go you know what i'm saying i think it gives them a little more stake in it uh to where both can grow together, um, yeah, and the, and that's the beauty of it. And and for him to make that that commitment, you know, just shows that he he's there, he's there for the long haul, or or in the sense of he's there to 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 get it where he thinks it can go. Yeah, right like you, yeah, yeah, like you said, that's a that's a base network that's going to cover you no matter the and the other deals become more like gravy if you've got yeah. uh uh the griot there all the time i was looking yeah. at this the big 10 deal last year in 2022 was 2.6 billion dollars over mm-hmm. six years which comes out to 430 million a year and people we're just talking the tv deal you're not talking about Ohio State football jerseys that go for a hundred and fifteen dollars at a, at a, in the bookstore in, in a in a store. You're not talking yeah. about a stadium that holds a hundred thousand people and the tickets are on average what for Ohio State game two or three hundred dollars. Probably uh, set, seventy-five nosebleed. Seventy-five mm-hmm. nosebleed. You know, so 
I agree with you for, for Byron Allen to, and Byron Allen is growing with all that he has. He's getting more uh, every day. His business is growing every day. What better than the HBCUs to grow with him? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that $430 million split, 16 schools, <laughs> 26 million. Yeah. Uh, well, minus whatever percentage the conference take. Uh, and, but, but they're probably making 20 million off the deal. But, but yeah. And just think about this the celebration. Why, yeah. Huh? Celebration no, Bowl why pays why out a meal. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what makes everything kind of move, right? Yeah, the TV hand, the TV dollars, right? And now we are investing back into it. One thing that you will see is, as is evident now, competition level is going up. Uh, Look at just how the CIAA is 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 getting more and more competitive every day. You know, um, other schools coming in. I think. And let's let's be real. You know, I said that about USC, UCLA. To put, look how fast everybody moving to Big Twelve, but now CIAA inking big deals. You might see more of the Bluefield states, the the, the, the Campbells, the Elon. They might be more willing to, to move into a historically black conference. Mm-hmm. Because there's competition and there's television exposure. See, I, I and I don't think people really understand the dynamic that plays in it. Because Pac-12 was a well-oiled machine. They had their Pac-12 network, but it wasn't what the Big Ten was moved. Right. It wasn't what the SEC has moved. So now you see why these schools moving around to these conferences. And it's and, and 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 it's like they want a part of the share, the big dollars. So if our schools start to get into that ramp, and it starts to grow, hey, then we can start to get improvements on the facilities. We can start to get, you know, more exposure so that we're getting national recruiting. Uh, you know, more kids from the West are now exposed. Uh, you can sneak more and more talent out of areas that might not regularly get this covered. So, you know, it's a beautiful deal for me. But, you know, I don't want to dwell on that. I just wanted to throw that out there. But we we, we, we got to get back over here because, you know, uh, back, back always has an interesting angle. And I tried my best impersonation back. But, but uh but yeah, but but anything interesting before we do our highlight? Anything else like on your mind? We talked about many things, but we might have to do that the next week. But but uh, was there anything else like you were thinking about? Well, I just wanted to throw in real quick before we go to that and close out. Uh, that deal with the Big Ten, like you said, it shows you conference realignment. So. Uh, it's like my political science professor at Winston-Salem State, Dr. Subai Shaw, used to say, if you want to know politics, you follow the money. You, fo- you uh, I think Joe Biden's daddy used to say to politicians that would visit his house, they say, well, let me tell you what my values are. And he would say, uh, you show me your budget, I'll tell you what your values are. So people make decisions based on revenue uh, more than anything else. This is a business. And for so many years, uh, in Power 5 schools, head coaches are making uh, 4 and $5 million. Position coaches are making two hundred dollars and $300,000. Not to mention uh, some of these schools are located in parts of the country where if football were not big, uh there wouldn't be much going on football impacts lodging with the hotels the the spirits uh, the drinks the the food the apparel it, these are businesses 
And uh, we have to know in HBCU community how these deals work and what are, what's the potential for scaling up uh, to kind of get to some of those levels uh, for, you know, and, and this is good when we throw these numbers out there so you can see why some of these these things happen. Byron Allen coming around is a big deal, and that's a, that's a big, big businessman to be doing that. Uh, no, I, 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 I do want to talk about real briefly before we close, um, and maybe next week we'll take a look at uh, conference realignment in HBCUs. One thing I like that we do, Ben, and, 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 and I almost said D like he was here, um, we look at an uh, issue and what does that mean to the HBCU community, whether it be NIL deals uh, where, mm -hmm. where student athletes can profit off of their name, image, and likeness. What does that mean for uh, uh, a, a paying college? What does that mean for Livingstone College? We, or we look at the bowl situation, shout out to the new bowl for the SAIC and the CIAA that's just been announced that'll take place uh, yes, in Earth. The, the early Florida days. Beach Bowl. Yeah, the Florida Beach Flo Bowl. Shout out. Florida. What's your, what's your, as a Benedict Tiger, what did you think when you saw that news? I thought it was big. I thought it was big. I, it's, it's needed. You know, you you, you you wondered if it was going to happen with the success of the Celebration Bowl. So I was wondering if it would happen, how long. Now, granted, we got to look at the, the benefits because, you know, when you have a, a, a nationally ranked team uh, like, like Benedict, you know, you always want to try to prove yourself against the big boy. So, right. but... Once again, as you said, I show you where your values are. If you show me your budget, and we got budgets, we got things we gotta commit to with that budget. So we gotta look at what will be also most impactful for the budget. Uh, and and I'm gonna be honest. I would love to see a matchup against my Tigers versus the top of the CIAA, if possible. I would love to. I would travel to go see it. But we got to see. We got to see. I We got to look at, you know, some of the inner workings of that and what, what the future prospectus is. Because, you know, let's say Benedict wins it. But let's say you got a Tuskegee that finishes second who travels well. Might be more beneficial to have Tuskegee versus a Benedict because you know they're going to bring 5,000. Right. So also you got to look at the dynamics of that with, with those who are hosting the event. You know, it has to, it has to suit all parties. Yeah, you know, um, and and I know with Benedict, it's a tough situation because you know if you like like we were last year and you were a top seed in the playoffs, you know you're going to host two possibly three rounds, right? So you say, hey, we got a chance to get all the revenue, right? <laughs> if we make a run. You know, so you got to weigh those things. Those things put it back to end. Um, you know, now, you know, you could have disappointment like we had last year and lose in the, in the well, second round. We had the second five. round. You know, we didn't get to host multiple games, but, you know, that's still out there. And, and they might say, hey, we know we're going to make, we've been making X, Y, and Z at home games and now playoffs. Higher stakes, higher competition. You know, we still it might outweigh what what the, what the initial promises are of the Florida Beach Bowl. So we have to see. But I'm excited either way because I I love having options. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to uh, people yeah. even attempting to do it. You know, uh, somebody out there wants. 
uh, these young people to have a postseason opportunities. And yeah. and sometimes it's our job as fans to make sure that it's successful. They can only yeah. do so much. I mean, they get the sponsorship money and they get the location. We got to go support it. We gotcha. we have to be in gotcha. the stands and buy a drink, gotcha. buy some orange juice and and some uh, celery sticks. Got to. And and, yeah. and and folks, we active on them social media pages. We should be tweeting and sharing all right. the, the the excitement of the Florida Beach Bowl celebration bowl. Uh, because it, it, it is it is us that makes it what it is. We validate it. Not the ESPN contracts or the ABC contracts. It is the fans, the consumers that validate these things. Look at the Bayou Classic. It is the atmosphere, the fans, what they yeah. bring that validates it to where it's been a staple on NBC. NBC bought into that thing years ago in the 80s. Right. Yeah. Because of the people, because they valued that, the heritage, the significance of it. Look at what they've sacrificed. There have been some great Southern teams and great Grambling teams that sacrificed the playoffs that they probably could have made runs for national championships because they know the value of that that game. And it's good for revenue <laughs> yeah. with the TV contract. But that's that's what we have to understand, people. Like, if, if we don't buy into these things and support them and get out there alumni okay we got because we're the ones that validate it to where if we make it the most prominent game because we're attending it and 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 making it that there's no way the tv companies and stuff will stay away because they will see the revenue they will see the opportunity now Got to make sure we're smart where we don't catch the back end of the stick. But, I, you know, I go back and I, I'll shut this up so we can close out with featuring a &T. But I just remember when we used to do the Capitol uh, Classic, Benedict in South Carolina State, when we renewed that, we would easily, at because we played at William Bryce, which is the stadium of the University of South Carolina, easily the first couple of years we moved it there, Easily 60,000 plus. Easily. You know, mm -hmm. some things change. People, you know, have different ways. But, you know, I just think about that. Like, why wasn't that sustained? We were, we were producing it, and it might have dropped. You know, I don't know the particulars. I know the first several years when I, I, I attended it, it was, it was amazing. And it's just like we need to continue those when we put these postseason, these playoff games. Like we need to do it so that we get the attention now, especially while people people's antennas are up with these these uh, entertainment corporations. But with that, we got a few more minutes. Yeah. We got a little over five minutes. So, Mac, I'm gonna pass it to you to show our our, our academic highlight. Go ahead. I would last little piece on that. You know. Uh, freedom is not free. And, you know, uh, Ken Free, we talk, I talk all the time about how that, that, uh, that early bowl he did was called the Freedom Bowl. And we grew up selling programs at those games. Uh, and, you know, so we grew up about, you know, seeing this take place, seeing great players like Jerry Rice in the Freedom Bowl, uh, Willie Satellite Totten and uh, the Allen Hookers at A&T yeah. and, and, play, and, and players like that. And so but the only way you could get them all there, the only way you could showcase that world-class scholar athlete was with the revenue. And uh, my uncle, your dad, always, he never went to sleep until the adequate number of tickets were sold because that was the big thing, support, support. I can go out and get the sponsors, but you still have to come and support the, and you're gonna have the time of your life if you go. There's nothing like seeing Grambling State University's band at that time take on Florida A&M, the Marching Rattlers, 
and then Gramlin just brings out uh, Dimples, the R&B singer that had the song, You Better Stop. And he sings at halftime. You never forget these things. And, and they got great scholarship going on like we're highlighting to close out the show today. You don't see magazines anymore. Everything is so digital. It's good to get a magazine in your hand. This is Ann, North Carolina a and State University's uh, college magazine where they highlight their academic achievements and their great research and development things that they have going on. Just want to take a quick moment at the end of these shows to highlight the great academic and innovation that's going on at these campuses. Real quick caption I'm going to read for you. It says, visions of what the future would look like usually include references of the Jetsons, flying cars, hovercrafts, robots, and automation. Welcome to the future. North Carolina a and already serves food by delivery robots. And I'll say this, if you haven't been to a and campus in a while, it is the most interesting thing. They have these little robots that'll ride by you with food deliveries to the dorm rooms by these little robots. It's just amazing. Uh, they even have humanoid and canine robots in the College of Engineering labs, adding an exciting new dimension to its portfolio of futuristic innovations as it unveils three new autonomous shuttles that will soon go into use on campus and nearby roads. So I'm gonna close that right there by saying this, this is highlighting ANT's autonomous vehicle program they have a world-class school of engineering. I told you last week my daughter was in that program, which she is. And uh, these cars drive themselves, and they are on campus now doing this. So if you're an engineering student or a math major or an IT student around the country, around the world, you may be watching this, and you want one of the best engineering departments in the world, North Carolina a and would be a smart choice, and that's coming from around of Winston-Salem State. So big ups to A&T and what they're doing over there. We'll feature another big school to, next to, week. To the Aggies. Big ups to the Aggies. And though they're not in the MEAC anymore, we still got love. We still them. claim them. Right. We still, we're we're going to talk about that, right? Oh, yeah. Next week. Oh, we're going to oh, talk oh, about We didn't get in tonight because I ain't, cause yeah. we would have gone another hour. But we, another, Aggie yeah. fans, we coming for you because y'all feeling some kind of way over there. And it's been yeah. a lot. Been a lot said by former players and stuff. That's looking a little, little, little side eye at this move, but we'll talk about that more next week. We're gonna see how it pans out. If Ant can get a win next weekend, maybe that right calm everybody down. So we're gonna see. It's tough when you start the year zero and three. Uh, yeah, that's tough. tough match. There's some tough matches, but uh, yeah, but on yeah. that. Brother Mackett, man, another great time, man. But uh, we're going to look forward to next week getting at you. Look for us Friday with a quick live with names are not important. Shout out to Brother Mac. Uh, and, uh, hey, man, until next week, my brother. Peace. Peace. We'll see you. Check us out. Facebook, names are not important. Instagram, Mac and Free. YouTube. Names are not important. Other than that, hey, we'll see you next time.